Hi everyone, I'm Patrick from Assembly AI and in this video we learn about Gradio. Gradio is a Python framework that makes it super simple to build nice looking machine learning apps. So with this you can build friendly web interfaces that have different types of inputs, for example text, images or audio and then you can pass this to your machine learning model and then you can show the output in a nice way. So in this video I show you everything you need to get started and in the end I also show you how we can deploy and share these apps. So let's get started. So to get started let's follow the official quick start guide so we can install this with pip install gradio and now let's copy the first example code and switch to our editor so here i already have a file app.py and i also already installed this so let's paste in the code so we import gradio as gr and then we create a gradio interface an interface provides a high level abstraction to create these demos so it gets input types and output types and then a function that is executed in between. And then we say demo.launch and now if we run python app.py then this will start a server. So now our app is running and we can visit our local host and here we see we have a text input field where we can put in a name and then click on submit and then the function is um, executed and then we see the output field which is also a text field. So this is what we specified here with just a string, the inputs is a text, the outputs is a text and in between we um, execute this function. So this function needs one parameter since we have one input parameter and then it also needs one output that we, uh, one return parameter that we return because we also have one output field. So yeah, this is the simplest way how to get started and how to build these interfaces. And now let's dive into this a little bit deeper. So first of all, as a input or output field, we can just use a string like here. So we used a text, we can also use an image or a audio field or for example, a label for the output and then it will automatically create these widgets for us. Or if we want a little bit more control, we can create them ourselves. So instead of just using the string, we use Gradio and then we can use the different widgets. For example, here we use a text box and then if we have a look at the parameters, so for example, we can say we want lines equals two and we want a placeholder. So we say name here. And now let's save this and then let's rerun our app. And by the way, to see all the available widgets, we can have a look at the official documentation. So here you see all the different components that you can use. And we have a look at a few of them in a few moments. But now let's actually reload our app. And now here we see we have our text box now with two lines and everything else is still the same. So this is one thing that we can do. And now we can also use multiple inputs and outputs. So let's see how to do this. So to use multiple inputs and outputs, instead of just using one component here, we can use a list. And then for example, let's use a text component. Then we also want a check box and then we also want a gradio.slider from 0 to 100 so we can mix and match strings and the actual components and then for the outputs so let's reformat this a little bit for the outputs we also use a list where we want a text field and then let's also use a number field for example and then we also have to modify the function so now let me copy and paste this here so since we have three inputs we also need three parameters here and then we need to return two outputs here since we have two outputs and now here for example we make the salutation dependent on the is morning boolean so this is a checkbox so then this is a boolean parameter and this is a number already because we use a slider so this is automatically done for us and then we return these to output so let's again restart our app and then let's have a look at this so if we reload this, so now we see we have three fields. I can put my name, I can use the checkbox and I can have the slider here and then I submit this and we get two different outputs. So yeah, this is how we can use multiple inputs and outputs. Then let me quickly show you how these image and audio components look like because they also make it super simple to upload images or audio files and then pass them to our models. 
So let me copy and paste the code here for you. So here we use a Gradio image component as input and here we specify a shape and then for the output we just use a string. And then for the function we get an input image as input parameter and this is already a NumPy array. So here we can for example apply a sepia filter by saying by using the NumPy dot product and then we also return a image. And now if we restart our app and wait a few moments, and then if we go to our app and reload the page, then here we see we have an image component as the input. So here we can drop an image or we can click to upload. And then here we can select an image, for example, and then click on submit. And now we see we have the sepia filter applied. So this is how easily we can work here with image components in Gradio. And the same with audio files. So let me copy and paste this here as well. So for the audio, we simply use this gradio.audio component. And now if we again restart our app, then let's have a look how this looks like. So here I noticed now it's it's using a separate port. So here I have to open this as well. And here we can again drop our file or click to upload and then for example, select this. And now here we can even listen to this. So Sun let's AI listen. AI is a deep learning company that builds powerful APIs to help you transcribe. And then we can submit this. And here, for example, we could apply speech to text and then display this as a text field. So yeah, this is how images and audio components look like. Now let's learn about Gradio blocks. So until now we always use the Gradio interface, which is a very high level abstraction. So it does a lot of things for you. For example, it already adds these two buttons and it already defines a two column layout. So if you want more flexibility about the layouts and data flows, you can use a Gradio block. So for this, let me copy and paste this here as well. So here we say with Gradio blocks as demo. So we always use this as a context manager and then inside we define our components again and then for example, a button. And then here we add an event. So we say button click and then what will happen. So here we again execute the function and it gets these inputs and outputs. And now let's restart our app. So then if you have a look at this, now we see we no longer have two columns by default. So here we have our input and output box and then we have the greet function. So this works as well. And now let's have a look at a more complex example. So as a second blocks example, let me copy and paste this as well. So here I also show you how we can integrate this with Hugging Face Transformers. So for this, of course, we have to also install pip install transformers. Then we download a model from the Hugging Face Hub. So here this is a model that does translation from English to German. So in this function, we return, we run our model and then return the German text. Then again, we say with Gradio blocks and then here we define our layout. So we say with Gradio row and then we uh, add two columns. So all of these are used as context managers. And then here we add our fields. Then we have a button and again say button click where we add this function that should be executed and then the fields. And then we also add some examples in the bottom. So let's again restart the app and have a look at how this looks like. So here we get two columns again and here we have an English text and then here we also have examples. So let's select one and then we can click on translate and now this is running the model and here we have the German text. So this is actually correct. So yeah, this is how we can use the Gradio blocks and in a moment I also show you how we can deploy this app so and then share this. So, but first I want to show you one more thing. So I want to show you how we can handle state in Gradio apps. And for this, let me copy and paste the code in here. And there are two ways how to do it. First, we can use a global state. And for this, we use a global variable, for example, data equals a list. And now inside the function, we can add items to this list. The only problem with a global state is that this is shared between all users. So if multiple users use your app, then they all add items to the same global variable. So there is a second way to do this. And for this, we can use a session state. So here as the last parameter inside the function, we add the history. And now in this example, we use a chatbot. And then for the inputs and outputs as last input field, we use the state for the inputs and the outputs.
And now inside the function, we can now access the session state and then say this is a list. And then we can add the responses to this list. And then we also have to return this as last parameter here because we want to keep this as the output. And now we have this as session state. So let's run the app. So now here we can chat with our bot so we can say hello and then here we see the output fields and now it's not very clever so it says I don't know and then we can ask for example how many and then we get a new answer. So as you can see the old um, responses are still stored so this is how we can use session state and now let me show you how we can share and host the apps. Now let me show you how we can share and host a Gradio app. So for this we have two options and the first one is when we say demo launch we can say share equals true and now when we run this then this will also create a public URL that we can use for sharing. So let's wait a few moments. And there we have it. So we have a local URL, but now we also get this public URL. And if we visit this URL, then here we have our app that is up and running. So we have the example that we've seen before, where we can put in a English text and then click on translate. And now this will run the model and here we get the translation. So this is the first option or as a second option. So here we see for free permanent hosting, we can check out Hugging Face spaces. So if we go to this website, then of course we need an account so we can create this for free. Then we can click on create a new space and now we can give this a name, for example, demo. Then we can also select the starters for Streamlit or Gradio or Static, for example, a Flask app. In this case, I want Gradio and now I say public and then create space. And then there are different ways to get started. For example, we can say git clone and then add our file and then push this. Or we can add a this remote to an existing git repository that we already have. Or we can do this manually. So in this case, I say add file and then create new file. And then we need a file that is called app.py. And now let me copy and paste the code from here. And now here we can remove share equals true. And then we can commit this. And now in this example, since we also use the transformers, we need to specify this as requirement. So here we say create new file. And now in this case, we want a require requirements.txt. And in this case, I know that we need torch and then the transformers. And then again, we don't have to spe specify Gradio here. This is already included. Then we say commit new file. And now we go back to this side. And now here it says your app should be running on this page after a few moments. So let's wait a little bit. And now after refreshing, we have our app hosted on Hugging Face Spaces. And now here again, we can select an English text and click on translate. And now this is running the model in the background and this is working as well. So this is how we can host a Gradio app for free on Hugging Face Spaces. And now one more note, if we already have a existing GitHub a Git repository, for example, that is already on GitHub, then we can use this command by saying git remote at space and then this address. So if we go to the website and here this is the full URL and then we add this as a separate, a second remote and then we say git push and this command and now we can also push this to to this space again via Git. So yeah, this is all I wanted to show you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a like and consider subscribing to our channel and then I hope to see you next time. Bye.